Alrighty, welcome back boys and girls. It's your main math man, Mr. Shank, coming to you live from Walker Grant Middle School. And in this video, I'm just going to be going over some examples, working with some theoretical and experimental probability. How many total possible outcomes are there? Meaning, how many sides are on this number cube? How many sides are on this number cube? Very good, six. Again, that, that counts it like this. You'd say, I have one. So let me, let me do it like this. I have one, I got two, I got two, I got three, I got four. Where's that? Five and, yep, six. So there's a total of six sides. So that means that when we are talking about this theoretical probability, that means that there's gonna be six total sides. So let me kind of write some of those ideas on here. Let me move this a little bit closer. All right, so again, if we needed to write out the sample space, I could write it like this. I would say, let's do something like this. I'd say, well, I have uh, the number cube. I have a number cube. And again, if I need to know what those look like, again, I, I can kind of write the sample space like this. I'd say I have one, two, three, four, five, and a six. So again, that means there's six total sides. When you go to, say, the theoretical probability of the event, again, you would write it like this. So for this first one, I'm going to do, I would say it like this. I would write it the probability again, capital P, and then I would write it like this. I'd say probability of rolling a two. Again, it's the number of twos that we have, number of twos over the total number of spaces, of spaces. Let me write that a little bit better, of spaces. So what do you guys think? Uh, can you guys tell me how many how many twos do I have in that sample space or how many twos are on that number cube? How many twos are on that number cube? Just one. So again, make sure you're saying that. I would say the number of uh, twos I have is one. And when we said the total number of spaces is six. And so we would say the probability of rolling a two on that number cube is one over six. All right, same kind of idea with uh, rolling a five. So let me uh, break this apart a little bit. Let me do a different color here. So what about this? I would say the probability of rolling a five on that number cube. How many, uh, what do you guys think? How many how many fives do I have? Yep, it's still going to be one over six, so I would write it like this. I would say it's the number of fives I have, which is one, over the total number of spaces, which is six. Very simply, I have that same exact thing. So very simple for ourselves. Any questions on that so far? Again, this is super simple, but I do want to make sure you guys are seeing how this works. Let's take it uh, up a little bit. The, uh, the event is rolling an even number. So how many, let's actually write it like this. So I'd say the probability, the probability of rolling an even number. Again, is the number of even numbers over the total number of spaces. And what I can do is this, I can circle and say how many even numbers I have. I would say I have one, I have two, I have three even numbers. And so just like this, I would say I would have the probability of rolling an even number. There's three even numbers over the total number of spaces, which is six. And I've seen uh, some people in chat, very good. They'd say three over six, or again, you wanna make sure you can simplify those fractions by dividing by the greatest common uh, factor. So we're gonna divide both the numerator and the denominator by three over three. And so we say this is going to be one half. All right, very good. And so now, lastly, my last example on this one is going to be as follows. Let's do, let's do an orange. Actually, let's do a red. I haven't done red yet. 
So it's saying rolling a, a number greater than one. So we'd see the probability of rolling a number, let's say greater, let's say greater than, greater than one. Well, let's count out the number of spaces that are greater than one. We would say that it, it would be these spaces. It would be two, three, four, five, or six. And so yes, there are five. Let me back up. There are five numbers that are greater than one. And so we'd say in our numerator, it's going to be five. In our denominator, it is going to be the total number of spaces, which is six. And so our probability is just going to be five over six. So now, just some other examples. So it says a spinner is used for a game to determine if the game is fair. That means that both uh, outcomes are uh, equal. So let's see, if it is not fair, who has a greater probability of winning? So you win if the number is less than four. However, if it is not less than four, your friend wins. So let's see. So what do you guys think? Looking at that spinner, Let's kind of break down what this looks like. So there's, uh, let's say this. Let's kind of break down what this looks like. So there's uh, eight. There's eight total spaces. There's eight total spaces, and they're number numbered. Excuse me, one through four. Well, let's see. It's saying, uh, it's saying that you win. So let's do green. Let's say. Uh, you win, you win if the number is less than four. Well, when we are looking at the number of spaces, or if we're looking at the list of spaces, we can get, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right. So, how many, uh, what would be the probability? Let's actually do it like this. What's the probability of us winning or for you guys to win? What's the probability of a win? You guys, some people are saying one half. Well, let's see. How many spaces are strictly less than four? How many spaces are less than four? Well, we would have a one, a two, and a three. Those are the three numbers that are less than four. So it's actually going to be like this. We're going to say it's going to be three over the total number of spaces, which is eight. <laughs> so yes, it is. <laughs> it is not fair. I do agree with you. Because, yes, uh, some people like to just say, hey, it's fair. It's one. Uh, it's 50-50. Well, it's not quite the case because the probability, let's actually say the probability of a friend, a friend winning, winning is going to be, so it's, if the number is not less than four, well, what's the other, uh, what's the other amounts? Well, it's going to be the other values. So it's going to be four and greater. So it's going to be all of those other spaces, which is going to be five spaces. And so that makes sense because you just have to say that it is the other amount. So let me try drawing that five again. Five over eight. So yeah, we would say it's not fair because the friend winning is more, or is a greater probability. So we could say, uh, let me actually just type since that way it's a little bit easier. And let me just put it like this. Let's say, well, let's say this. Let me do uh, a little bit bigger. So let's say it, uh, if I can do it correctly, let's do white. There we go. Is not fair since uh, the friend has has is five spaces if i can tell you five spaces that, that gives 
gives them a win. Which means have a greater probability so again you just want to make sure and that's kind of why I drew out uh, that sample space that way you can kind of see what those would look like so you can make sure that you are seeing that however now this is still using that same setup with that same spinner but you want to see for number six it says uh, you win if the number is a multiple of two. If the number is not a multiple of two, your friend will, wins. So let's uh, let's actually write this out. I want to say the probability of a multiple multiple of two. So that means it's an even number. So how many? How many even numbers do we have? Well, we have one, two, three, and four. So yes, we would say that we have four spaces that are multiples of two. And so we'd say it's four over eight. And that means that the other, uh, the other outcome or other possible outcome is not multiples of two, which is also four over eight. And so yes, this would be the same as one half since we divide by four over four and so we could say this i can say uh, this we could say m is fair since uh since both players have an equal probability Probability, probability of winning. All right. So again, you are uh, seeing carefully the way that works. Again, you write probability as capital P, and then you write the event inside of the parentheses. Is there any questions with that one? Any questions with that one? So now, let me see this last one, the very last one. So it says, at a carnival, you pick a duck out of a pond that designates a prize. You want to win a large prize, and the theoretical probability of winning it is 9 over 25. If there are 50 ducks, how many ducks will win a large prize? So let me make this a little bit bigger. And I'll, well, let's see. Let's set this up. Uh, let's see. There's a couple different ways you can set it up. I think you guys have done proportions before. So well, you could set it up like this. We'd say uh, 9 over 25. So let me actually write it. So you could sell, uh, solve it like a proportion. If I can write that word carefully, proportion. So we're saying 9 over 25 is that initial probability. And we're saying, well, we're looking for when we have an x in the numerator. And we're saying out of the 50 ducks, how many would win a large prize? So again, you write it like this. I have do that butterfly method if you'd like. Again, I can have uh, 50 times 9 is, let's see, maybe 45, 4,500, so it'd be 45, like that. And then we'd say, on our right side, we would say it's 25 times x, which is 25x. And so yes, you guys would always divide by the coefficient, and so divide both sides by 25. And so we would get, we would say x is going to be X is going to be 18. So yes, that is also, you could just 